So I'm going to show you a few really cool reasons why you should start using the Midjourney website to generate your images. If you're sick of using Discord and generating images there, some of these tools are going to make life a lot easier for you. And it's not just about generating images, but there's a few nifty features on the Midjourney website that make life a lot easier. I'm going to cover them in today's video. But to start off with, the most obvious reason to use a website of Discord is just the options are there and you don't have to worry about remembering a bunch of parameters. If I go onto the website here, under the create tab and I wanna create my prompt. I don't have to type in slash imagine for one, but if I come over here to my settings, everything is here. I can choose the aspect ratio on a slider. I can increase the stylized values. I can increase the weird value. I can also increase the variety, otherwise known as chaos. If you're not sure what these are, you can hover over them and it shows you the parameter in the box that pops up. And you can choose between standard, raw, the version. There's a lot of things here that are very easy to find without having to look up a parameter. But you can also type a lot of these parameters into the imagine bar here. However, not all of them work. On Discord, you have things like prefer suffix or prefer option set, to create custom codes, things like that. They don't necessarily work on the Midjourney website. But otherwise, it's just a massive amount of convenience here for creating your images. And of course, image prompting is so much easier. You can just come up here either upload an image or even grab something like this here and drag it up in there. And you can choose to have an image prompt, style reference, or a character reference, all pretty easily. And like I said before, I don't even have to worry about typing slash imagine. I just type in a prompt like a dog on a skateboard. I hit enter and it will start creating my image. So there alone, you can see how much easier image creation is on the website as opposed to remembering all the parameters on Discord. But there's still a few more things I wanna show you. It's very easy to rerun a job here and just simply re-enter that prompt. You've also got other options like use. This will pop the prompt and all of the same settings and that onto the prompt bar. And of course I can hide this from my feed if I want to, but there's also some more options here, such as being able to copy certain values like the prompt, job ID, or the image or image URL. So a lot of these options here are pretty handy and they also appear when I click on the image itself. And then naturally, a lot of the options you want are down here in the bottom right hand corner, but you can actually customize this section. You'll see here there's more options. If I turn everything on, you see we have our very subtle, very strong, our upscales, remix, pan, zoom, and a few more down the bottom here. But it can get pretty cluttered, so I like to keep a lot of these turned off. I don't typically worry about pan or zoom because one of the really awesome tools about this is the reframe tool. I come down here to where it says more and I can rerun. As I said before, we have repaint, which is essentially very region where I can select an area and change it. So I can actually select this here and just type in something like sunglasses. Then we get our dog with sunglasses. But if I open that up, I'm gonna use reframe and show you exactly what that does. I click on reframe and I can change my prompt up here but that's not a big deal. What is really cool is under reframe, I can change the aspect ratio and get a preview of where the information is gonna be added. So if I want to make this taller, I can just bring this back in to the left to make it taller or to the right to make it wider. And as I make those changes, I can choose whether I want the image to sit at the start or the very top, the end or the very bottom or the center. And this works the same when going wide, I can go left, right or center and it gives me a visual representation of what it's actually going to do when it reframes this image and of course i can change the prompt here as well if i want to add or change something to it but also the zoom function here is so much nicer you can see exactly how much space is going to be left around the image so it's just a really powerful really simple way to operate so if i decide to go back to reframe and i want to make this really tall and i pop him down the bottom i can click submit it will then process that job. And you can see it's created these images with a bit of information at the top. And that's a hell of a lot easier to access than Discord. But if I click on one of these original images and I hover over very region, I can actually see some of the original variations from the original grid. So I can click here to view this image as well. But if I really like this image and I want something similar, there's a nice little function for that too. If I come up here to the little search tool, it will actually submit that image for search and bring up some very similar images with similar style, similar elements like the skateboard, and you can go through and get more ideas for your prompts. So clicking here, this is a really cool looking image. And of course, if I want to, I can come down here, use the prompt, and everything gets popped into the prompt bar so I can just, I can create my own version of that pretty easily. Or I can edit that prompt and try something a little bit different. So you see how it's very easy to bounce around and create images 
on the Midjourney website with a few clicks here and there, as opposed to remembering a bunch of parameters and typing everything into Discord. Keep in mind, I do actually still recommend you use Discord from time to time. It's actually really handy if you're generating on your phone. So if you're out and about and you have an idea you wanna generate, it's actually really easy to use that on Discord. The website uh, is not quite as mobile optimized yet and clicking on various buttons all over the page might not be as efficient as using something like a simple text bar in Discord. What I also like about it, so if I go over here to organize, you've probably seen me mention this before, I can just select entire days and then download a zip file with those 226 images. What's also cool is if I hold down shift and select a few individual images, so I can download those there. However, what's also cool, there's a few more conveniences here besides just downloading. One is if there's an image I wanna upscale, instead of having to click through every time and go through one by one, I can just right click and upscale. I can come down, right click, upscale, and you might have noticed also, if I right click here, you can vary, upscale, remix, rerun, reframe. It's all here with a right click. You don't even have to bring up the full image to sort of take advantage of these actions. There's a lot of really handy conveniences on this website. Now I do want to slow down for just a second because if you're actually relatively new to Midjourney, you might not be sure what some of these features are. So I have this image here. If I wanted to vary, so we've covered the, the reframe and repaint. Rerun simply resubmits the job with the same prompt. Remix allows us to try a subtle or strong remix based on this image. So if I click subtle, it adds this image and the other images I use to create this image, which is a character reference. And I can change that from a woman, woman posing to a woman smiling, hit enter, and we'll reference that image to try and get something similar, but with my new prompt. And you see the image looks much the same, except she's smiling instead of posing. So also we have our upscales here from before, they've now come through. So we can download our upscales now by clicking here, going to download and this little arrow button up here. So that's pretty handy. But if I open this image up again, now Remix allows me to create a subtle remix of this image. Vary is very simple. It's much the same, except we don't get to change the prompt. So if I hit very subtle, and you may be wondering the difference between subtle and strong. Strong just means it relies a little less on the reference in both of these. So if I try very strong, it will just submit that with the same prompt. We've already upscaled and using the image means we can use it as an image prompt. As you can see, I click image, it pops up up here to use as an image prompt. If I wanna use the style, I click style, it will use it as a style reference, or I can use the prompt by clicking prompt and it adds the prompt into the prompt bar. So that's what these three buttons down the bottom here do. And it's all really convenient, and quite easy to use. But I'm gonna quickly check on those variations we made to show you how they turned out. So you can see here, these images are still quite similar, but they varied a fair bit more from the original image than the last ones did. It's the same prompt, same settings, just a higher level of variation. It is a strong variation. And if I want to vary again, there's buttons hovering over the image. I can click here to very subtle or very strong, and I can continue to go down that rabbit hole until I get something I like. Now, considering these features on your images, that means that you have a lot of powerful tools when you're using the explore page. So I come back and I go up to the explore page. If I find an image I like, like this here, for one, I can see the prompt and the aspect ratio and the settings they've used. I can use that as an image prompt, as a style, or I can just click prompt, and I can use that exact prompt. And if I want to really nail it down, I can also use the image and the style. So I have this same image as an image reference, as a style reference. I could even put a character reference if I wanted to. And I could submit that prompt to get my own version of it, which gets us something pretty similar. But I'm going to remove that and show you something really cool. I'm back on my organize page. And now what's really cool about this platform is when you're on Discord, if you want to create some kind of image reference, style reference, or character reference, you need to actually get the URL and it can be a bit of a hassle. On the website here, I've got this image of this girl here. If I drag that up into the image icon, I can add that as an image reference or a character reference or a style reference. But for example, if I add this as a character reference and I have my prompt, which is a woman at the gym on a treadmill, and I submit that, I come back over to create and you see how it's transferred that character with the hairstyle, the jumper, it's all very similar to the image. Even the background has made use of yellow like in the original image. Now, as I've said before, a lot of the parameters in Discord can also be used on the website, even if you can't see them in the interface. One example is if I take this image, I go to use to reuse the prompt. 
is I'm going to get rid of the image. And I can add in a parameter as I would in Discord, like dash dash SREF space random. And because this isn't an option in the interface, I can hit enter and I've been able to use style random and I have this SREF code that I can use and share or I simply click on it and it pops up in the bar to reuse. And that extends beyond just the use of our own images. If I head back to the explore page, that means if I find an image I like and it happens to have an SREF code attached to it, all I have to do is click that code and it will appear in the prompt. So I can easily type a prompt beforehand like a, dro a dog drinking tea, hit enter, and you can see I get a very similar style of image. But coming back to explore, sometimes you might find that clicking on images, you get personalization values or chaos values. All of these values can be clicked and added into your prompt if you see something about an image you like that you think might have something to do with the codes used. Or even the image can be used as well by dropping and dragging. So you can see how the Midjourney website makes things a lot more convenient for not only creating images, but mixing images, sourcing things like style codes, personalization codes. It's all there and you can use it all at the click of a button. You don't have to worry about copying and pasting, going back and forth and remembering a bunch of parameters. But that reminds me, if you want to download my cheat sheet, there's a bunch of parameters on that you can use on Discord. They also work on the website as well. But it's just a really handy platform, but there's still a bit more to it. If I go back to the website and head over here to tasks, for one, I can rank images to build my personalization. Or if I'm one of the top 2000 rankers of the day, I can earn some extra fast hours for free. So I go in here and I can click the image I like, or I can hit one or two. I like one, so I hit one on my keyboard. I like two on this one, I hit two on my keyboard. If I'm not sure about this, I hit three to skip. And I can just go through and hit one or two and rank the best images I want. And every now and then they will throw in a few sort of uh, tests to make sure you're human and that you're not just gaming the system. But that's a great way to get some free GPU time. And sometimes you'll find there's also surveys that you can take to earn fast hours as well. But one of the, mo one of the more recent features of the website is chat. If I go to chat, you can see there's rooms here where people share projects. This is just the general chaos room. It has a very Discord-y vibe to it, the way things are just sort of coming along. But I can put all images. I can go through my images. I haven't got any in here. There's some settings. I can go through to prompt craft all images and we can see some more images people are creating. And if I clear this, I can generate my own images to add in here. There's also daily theme. So if you want to create based on the daily theme, which is, which is listed up here, you can basically join in on the daily theme and generate some images for that also. There's also a newbies room here. And the idea of these rooms too, I think they are to try and get it to the point where people don't need a Discord account to sign up for Midjourney. So that is pretty handy. And of course, there's also some chat down the right here. So it's a great place to socialize and sort of discover new work and meet new people who are on the Midjourney website. But while we're on that topic, you can also head back to the Explore page again. If you are going through these images, sometimes if you find one you like, like this one here, and click on their name, it doesn't always bring up a series of images, but I've noticed that quite often you can get a series of images made by this user and explore things they've created in the past. So this woman with the kind of like a Nike logo on her head, we can see what kind of techniques this person uses and go through and check out their work. This is a great way to get inspiration and also see what prompts are working and get some ideas on how to prompt better by looking at examples of other people's work. But finally, it's just a lot easier to navigate. And if I come down here to help, I can go through the documentation. I've got community chat. Or what I really like is updates. I come down here to updates and I can go through all of them and just see what the most recent updates to Midjourney have been right here on the website. And this was in Discord, but it just wasn't as user-friendly or easy to read. And finally, I come down to my username here and I can manage my uploads. So you see I've got a bunch of uploads here. And a quick side note, these are the images that pop up on your image prompting section here. But notice if I hover over these images, you get a little delete bin here, but also information. If I click on that, it scans the image and generates some information about the subject and other descriptors that you can use. So this is actually really handy for finding out more information about the images you're using. You can go back. And even this image, which was not generated mid-journey, same thing. 
we get some pretty handy information here. So just another way of using your uploads and getting a bit more information out of those images. And you can basically go through and delete any of the ones you don't want. So if I don't want this one here, I can delete it, confirm, and it won't show up. So you can actually manage your uploads on the Midjourney website. And then of course, naturally go to manage subscription and see how many hours you have left. You can buy more fast hours and basically manage your plan from here. So it looks to me like while Discord is a great place for Midjourney to have started, it looks like they're really trying to shift all that functionality on the website into something that's a lot more user-friendly. I do hope they stay with Discord for the long run. Like I said, I prefer it if I'm using my phone, when I'm on a computer or an iPad or something like that, the website is generally a lot easier to use and there's a lot less mucking around to get what you want. So if you haven't checked out the Midjourney website yet, I highly recommend jumping on and giving it a go. It's actually incredibly easy to use and really convenient. And it's a great place for anyone using Midjourney to start generating images that they like and exploring the community. So that's the video for today, guys. I hope you found it useful. If you did, please consider giving the video a like. Otherwise, if you want more Midjourney tutorials, there are more on my channel. Otherwise, thanks for watching. And I hope to see you again next time. Have a great day.